In this exercise, we continue with image fusion, but we move from hybrid data to calculated matching when the images are not already co-registered. The exercise continues in the Fuse It tool, where we have the Bruca PCI database selected. We will work with subject mouse 7, a whole body PET CT, and Using the settings from the last exercise, we continue selecting both the PET whole body and CT whole body series and open, allowing them to run through the hybrid workflow. According to the hybrid workflow settings that we used for the last exercise, we've now proceeded straight through to the comparison tab where we do not see a nicely co-registered PET image. If we center the coordinates in the CT, we see evidence of the PET image far out of alignment. And if we adjust the color table, we can see more clearly that the head of the animal is clearly misregistered. To remedy this, we go back to the matching tab and on the matching tab we can select the reference and matching page from the menu in the top right. In this case we see our CT reference image along with the misaligned pet and we will improve the alignment and apply cropping. First of all on the layouts tab I can adjust the display to see the CT sagittal section horizontally on screen and then return to the general image manipulations tab. In order to co-register the pet image I should first improve the starting parameters and I can do that using the input reslicing controls accessible from the right lateral taskbar. In this case, the reslicing controls for the input series appear in the center of each display pane. And by clicking on the central square crosshair, I can drag using the left mouse button, click and drag, until we improve the alignment of the images. In this case, we're not aiming for perfect manual co-registration, but to provide a better starting point for the automated matching. To proceed with the workflow and change the mode to rigid matching, we should update the settings in the lower right of the tool. We check the species. Because the field of view is quite large, the volume has meant that rat has been detected. So we can switch the species to mouse. And we can switch the matching method from hybrid to rigid. We can deactivate the reslicing controls for the input image by returning to the general image manipulations tab. And next, we can pre process the image before we go on with matching. In this case, for a nice rotating MIP illustration later in the process, the CT field of view is off center and contains the bed imaging hardware. Therefore, we can crop the CT, resulting in a image without that bed hardware later on. We can access cropping using the blue arrow shortcut next to the workflow controls. This expands to reveal the cropping controls and when we turn on the crop checkbox we see a blue checkbox appear in the image. Here we can also select the species and check that mouse is correctly identified and this adjusts the size of the cropping box appropriately. We can click in approximately the liver, centering in all of the image planes to center the cropping box around the animal body. At this stage, we can continue in the workflow using the match current button. First, we are asked if we're sure that we want to crop the image. 
In this case, yes, we are. And now the workflow will proceed by calculating the cropping and then finishing the rigid matching process between the PET and the CT. Once the registration process is complete, we see the display update and we can see that the match between the PET and the CT has improved a lot. As usual, we can explore the co-registration result using the fusion controls, aiming to assess whether the rigid matching algorithm has worked optimally. We can now proceed using the workflow buttons first to the compare page where we now see the whole body layout with accurate code registration. And then for this exercise to illustrate the rotating MIP presentation capture, we can proceed again using the MIP workflow button in the lower right. This takes us to the final tab in the Fusic tool, MIP, where we see at the moment three possible MIP displays for this image, the CT alone, the PET alone, and the fused PET CT. In the lower left corner, we can select the type of MIP display that we want to calculate. If we use the menu, we see that we have the option of A, B, C plus F. In this case, that signifies we could have three input series to input and reference along with the fusion display. Alternatively, we can see only the input and reference images or only the fused MIP. For this example, we can use the ABC plus F setting, seeing all components of the image in their own rotating MIP. On the right hand side, we can select the image plane that will be displayed. In this case, to use the screen layout effectively, we can maintain the Y plane so that we're starting with the horizontal view of the animal. Cropping the CT means that we don't see a lot of the bed hardware in the image anymore, but we do still see a certain amount of background and some wires from the heating element underneath the animal. In this case, we can increase the lower threshold for the CT resulting in an image showing only the skeleton. In the case of the pet, we would like to highlight the lesion on the right side of the chest. And to do that, we can decrease the upper threshold, allowing the display to update. And now for this reduced threshold, we more clearly see the lesion on the right hand side, both in the PET alone and in the fused MIP. And now we can move on to calculating the MIP itself. The movie is calculated using the green run button in the lower right. First we will calculate, and if the movie doesn't run smoothly enough, we can recalculate with additional angles to add images to the rotating movie. Once each angle has been calculated, the MIPs begin to rotate. And from this point on, we can capture the movie for a presentation. The movie can be stopped using the video controls in the lower center of screen and restarted with either of the play icons. We still have the possibility of adapting the color table used for any of the images. 
without having to recalculate the MIP. In this case, I restore the cold color table. And if I want to capture the movie for use in PowerPoint, then I can switch from the continuous play format by activating the film strip capture icon. This moves us to single pass through. And the next time I start the movie, we get the save video dialog. Here, as usual, I can select animated GIF for easy embedding in PowerPoint. I can update the frame rate. In this case, I will select 8 frames per second and continuous loop. And then I can start the movie for capture. Once the movie has played through its single run, we get the write to GIF dialog and I can save the GIF to an appropriate location in the file system, in this case back to the PMOD USB stick, into the PMOD trial folder, where in the data folder I have the examples folder seen earlier.